Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just filmed part one of the story time where I was talking about my actual pregnancy, how I got pregnant, how we found out, why we decided to like sort of like try for children and yeah, like how my parents found out and all of that. And then this is part two where I'm actually talking about the actual giving birth experience, right? Number one, I wanted to film it. I couldn't number one because of covid right and my mom guys my mom was like yo don't take your camera to the hospital what if there's so many people there what if they steal it and i listened to her and i really really regret listening to my mom for the first time i was like ah, i should have taken my camera because now i don't have this and i wanted to film it number one to have it as a memory and then number two i wanted to film it because my partner couldn't be there because of covid they were like no you can't you can't you know don't come in so I don't have a video I, I just don't and i would have loved to actually show my partner me giving birth because he wanted to be there but he couldn't so yeah i think uh, because i live in johannesburg so i've been in i was in johannesburg the whole time and then i think a month or three weeks before my due date um i went home right i got home and i chilled and i was just like waiting for this child to like boom, drop and <laughs> I remember there was a time, I think three days before I actually gave birth where I was playing because I have this JBL, this loud pink speaker and I was playing <laughs> Big Zulu. I think my mom will remember this and I was playing Big Zulu like so loud because I'm like this child, your dad is Zulu bruh, let me play your guys' music. Like, let me play Big Zulu so you can come out, you know, and come, Ooh, you know. That did not work. I was just like, I'm gonna try everything for this child to come out. Cause I was tired. I was just like, you need to come out. It's over. Like eviction, like just go, we like just come out. Like, no. So I was trying everything to get him out, but it didn't work. But before I gave birth, I actually got sick. I got so sick. I remember like it was in winter and I had gotten so cold that like I could feel the cold in my bones. Like I was super, 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 super cold. And my mom was like, this is not okay. You need to go to the doctor. Like you, and you're pregnant. Like we don't know what's going on. You need to go to the doctor. And it turns out I just got cold because it was like super, 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 super cold. It was winter around June. And um, I'm very skinny. Another thing is I'm very skinny. So when it's cold, like the wind just gets like the cold just gets through to my bones and they start aching and things like that so my mom was like not okay so that happened and then the day when i gave birth that morning i was still feeling the cold in my bones and things like that i even have pictures i'm gonna insert pictures of my mom sort of like rubbing my not rubbing but then she would she had like hot hot water in like a bowl and she would sort of like take it kind of like a like a washcloth and sort of like thing in my bones so i can feel warm because i was getting cold so that happens she does that she's there and i'm like i'm feeling this pain and i always asked her because my mom has four children i always asked her Hore, what do contractions feel like because i never felt those brixton hicks contractions that sort of like prepare you for the actual contraction i never had those or well, maybe i did but they weren't painful and look my pain threshold is super super high so if something kills you for me i'm just like mm, you know because i know pain right so i feel this thing in my stomach and i'm just like it's not pain it's it's just like a it's there though like you feel it and my mom was like mm -mm. if it's not killing you it's not the contractions now it's this thing, but then, but then again, they start off soft and then as, as you, you like progress to give birth, then they murder you, you know? So she's like, maybe it's on. And I had already downloaded this, this app on my phone that will count your, con your contractions and then they'll tell you when you should go to the doctor, when it's time for you to give birth and things like that. Because I know of people who have the contractions and then you go to, especially at a public hospital, you go to the hospital, they're like, ah, you very far, go back and then come back after a few hours or even come back outside because you're very, very far. So 
I'm like, the only way I'll know if I'm having these contractions is if I time them, right? And then I'll know if they're, consi if they're consistent, then something is off. So I start with the app. I don't know if I even have the screenshot of my very first set of con con contractions. Because I wanted to document everything, right? That's another thing. I wanted to document everything. So I timed them and I'm noticing all well, these things are like 20 minutes apart, you know? But then again, they're not very like consistent, you know, like 20 minutes, 19 minutes, you know, and they're not, they're very irregular. And that app will tell you who are very irregular, but just relax. Don't be going to the, the hospital just now. Just relax. You'll be fine. And I'm like, okay, cool. That started around, four, I think 4 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m., right? I feel these things and I'm like, ah, man, this thing, like around, like it, I, it cuts you like around your, your whole waist, like you feel it. And I'm like... And the thing is, it comes and it stops. And then for 15 minutes, you just chill, like you're okay. And I'm talking to my mom and then it comes back again. I'm like, you know, like it, it, they make you, like they make you stop. Like you have to stop and feel them. Like you have to, like you can't be going. It's, it's not a pain that you can go and be doing. No, you feel it and you have to stop and acknowledge it. You know what I mean? So. I start timing them. I'm like two hours in now. It's like around six. My mom is like, ah, you know what? They were, I think this is it, ne? So let me go. She had to go somewhere, like a meeting and things like that. And then she's like, when I come back, we'll go to the to the to the hospital. And I was like, sharp. And she's like, in the meantime, just you know, relax and then bath, nyana. Like take your time and bath and prep, take a bag. Cause I was all packed up and stuff. I'm ready. I'm like, I'm ready for this child to come out. And she goes, and I then now voice note my partner because I think it was around five then when I voice noted him. And I'm like, dude, these pains are starting. You know, I'm tracking them. They, they are like consistent, but they're not as consistent. You know, they're like 20 minutes apart, 19, 16 minutes apart. But, you know, I think it gets on. So I'm going to get ready and then. You, uh, you know, I'll, I'll update you. Because at that time, I was thinking he's definitely sleeping. I'm not going to call him. I'll just send a voice note. When he wakes up, he'll see the voice note. Cool. So my mom leaves. I get in the bath. I am chilled. I have my phone there. When I feel the... I'm in the bathtub. When I feel the pain, I start the time. A timer. I feel it, feel it, feel it. it stop. Sharp. It's like, okay. So you time how far apart the contractions are. And then you time the actual contractions themselves. Like... You probably feel it for like 30 seconds, but then they are like three minutes apart, something like that. So you time the actual contraction and then you, then it will sort of like time for you the, the interval, like the how far apart it is. You get what I mean? So <laughs> that I'm doing, I'm in the bathtub, I'm bathing slowly, I'm chilled, you know, I'm having the time of my life. And then when I come out of the bathtub, I'm like, mm, I feel like I need to pee. So I sit down and I pee. As I pee, when I wipe, right i see like there's like blood there and i'm thinking whoa okay i've every single time i've researched when you're pregnant blood is not a good sign at all i'm now panicking i'm thinking what the hell is going on and then um i think i told my sister my sister was like no 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 that's fine because that also happened with her then i researched what this thing is and they call it a bloody show and apparently it's also another sign to show that you are about to give birth you are in labor you are in the it started i'm like oh okay i'm fine we are fine you know we're still in the game so i wipe and then i get ready and then i'm waiting for my mom now and now my grandmother is up everybody is up and i'm still i'm on the couch come like timing these things like now they're getting like shorter and shorter ne? like they're getting shorter and it's like the how far apart it is is getting shorter but the contraction itself is like getting longer i don't know if that makes sense so we get our neighbor i i, I my mom tells my neighbor Horbon, i'm going out and then when i come back can you please drive us to 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 thingy the hospital she's like cool can i go i'm like yeah it's time okay you know so <laughs> um 
I pack my things, I'm ready. My grandmother is like, Zabaya, and then bring that child here. And she's like, be strong. Like, you know, be strong. Are Oscar Kua. Like, don't be screaming like these girls who scream and shout, like giving birth. Yo, my grandmother, guys. She's like, don't be screaming and shouting like these people who scream and shout, like giving birth is something that's not natural, you know. Are it happens, it's pain. You take it like a like a like a modest woman. Like just just go like mm, don't scream. <laughs> That's my grandmother for you. Aroska Kuwa, Saras, Saras. You'll be fine. You know, this thing is natural. It happens. Like, we've all been through it. So, I go and I get to the hospital. I have everything my paperwork, my child's book, and all of those things. And we get there. They book me in. They're like, Why are you here? Hey, guys, public hospitals. But why are you here? I'm like, I'm in labor. They're like, why do you think you're in labor? So I explained to them what I had the bloody show and then I've been timing my contractions. They're very like consistent, but then they're like 50. At this point, they were like 15 minutes apart or whatever. They're like, 15 minutes is very, very far, but you know what? Let's just book you in. It's fine. Like, let's just book you in instead of sending you back home because you're going to be here for a long time, but it's fine. Come in. So they're like, first thing they tell you, ne? they're like, go inside, change, take off your underwear. Do not wear your underwear, right? And I'm like, if you know, you know. I don't know if it's, it can't be just at my hospital. I think it's a thing. Like, what, what do they call this? Labor wards, no underwears in sight. Don't wear underwear. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I go into the bathroom, I change, and guys, the thing that you know this like that like how we say public hospitals i don't know if it's just our public hospital because it was the service was great the hospital was clean the food was nice like everything was i had the time of my life you know so i go in there and i change i take off my underwear they show me where my bed is i chill on my bed they're like we'll come check you and i'm like shop how a few minutes later, this lady comes in. She is so nice. She's like, hey, what's your name? She is so cute even. And she's like, okay, let me check you. I'm like, you're checking what? She's like, how far dilated you are? Like, I'm going to check how far. And I'm like, oh, okay. So she goes in there. That is painful. That is painful. I wish there was another way to check, like, dilation because that wait like that thing is painful and they have that's the only way they can check how far dilated you are and i'm just like i can't i can't they're like Mugel, you have to you know you just have to she checks she's like two centimeters and you have to be at 10 she's like you're gonna be here for a long time just relax like that time i have my phone i have my charger i have everything i have data you know ready so she's like i'll come check you after like three hours i think i'm like cool but then i think in like two hours now i'm updating my partner the whole time i'm like okay i just had the check they say i'm two centimeters dilated she'll come check me after three hours sharp and then i think after two hours though there's a doctor that came because she was a nurse a doctor came and it's a guy and he was like i need to check you and then she does, he does it again. And he's like, one centimeter. I'm like, ah, ah, am I going backwards now? Like, I'm supposed to be like increasing. He's like, yeah, no. Um, your things are slow. So sit back, relax, but then I'll come back. And I was like, sharp. So then they write on their books and what, 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 sharp. I'm there chilling. My mom is asking how I'm doing and all of that. I'm texting my partner, texting YouTube, everything chilled, you know. They come in again. There's another lady. Oh, shame. So there was like three of us in the ward. Né? There was me by the door. There was another lady. She had passed her due date. And she, she was like clocking like 40 weeks pregnant or something like that. And they were like, you need to come in because this is not normal. Now they had to induce her to give birth. And then the lady at the very, very end, she, she had like a, she gave birth to like a stillborn. And that was painful because they even had to like sort of like plan for the funeral. And she had to call like, um, like her funeral thingy service and things and i was like that is so painful that you have to be like they can't release you they can't release the child to you like the funeral people have to get come get the child and i was like that's just so painful i'm sitting there and i'm talking to the lady that's next to me and the one that's getting in juice and stuff so we're sort of like helping each other on this journey right 
and every now and then you see somebody getting taken from the ward to a different section and you hear them screaming and you just like yo guys and like what's going on for people to be screaming like this and that time my mother my grandmother said you must be a lady like be modest you know and i did let me tell you i didn't scream so and um you get the pains the pains are still there right the pains are still there and when i say every 15 minutes it's think about this every 15 minutes you get this pain that literally murders you like it goes right around your waist and and you have to feel it and then after you feel it it goes away like nothing just happened like it literally goes like and then it stops ne? And then you are just fine. I'm like, oh, okay. And then, and then we talk, 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 talk. After 15 minutes, it comes again. And I'm like, wait. And then I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. And then I'm like, oh. Then we continue. And it's, it's like, it's a beautiful thing to see, but it's also weird. Like, it's like a weird thing to see, but it's also beautiful. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. So, as time goes, I get these nurses coming in, checking me. And they're like, okay two centimeters now i'm back at two then it's like four and then now the ladies in the morning like the morning shift ladies now it's like six o'clock they need to leave there's another shift that's starting and i get this new lady now she what's her what's her surname sister oh man i forgot her surname but then she was so sweet and I'm like, I came here like around six. She's like, ah, no. How are you not enough? Like you are not here to come stay here. You must do it in and out. You come in, we help you give birth, you go back home. People need these beds. You know, there are other women who need these beds. And it's a public hospital, so you, you understand. Like you don't you you know you're not getting no private room that's booked for you. No. You get what's there, you do your ish, you go, you know. She's like, ah, July. No, 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 no. What how far I get for? Ara I'm again, no. Ar when I leave here, Kausan, when my shift ends. You and I should be leaving together. I'm like, sharp. So she checks me. She's like, four. She's like, Ash, let me give you some time, Yana. But then I think I'm going to have to give you something to help you. I'm like, what do you mean help? I don't know. It's going to help, like, like make your things go faster. Ne? I'm like, sharp. Oh, cool. Because I'm trying to leave as well. I'm not trying to be here. Guys, I was in labor for 26 hours. 26 hours in labor. Feeling the pains. Like, and one thing about me is I could not lay down and be on the bed and you know i wanted to be on my feet because i thought when i'm on my feet then the pains are not as like hectic so then every now and then they have to come and check the baby's heartbeat so they have to strap you up and you use like sleep on i don't know if it's the left or the right side you sleep on the side and then they have to listen to the child's heartbeat because like they need to know i can be okay but maybe the child is doing a lot of because the thing is with with contractions, né? the contractions are actually what helps you dilate and the child is being pushed down. Like the kid is being pushed down and you're being prepared to give birth kind of thing. So there's tension on your body, but most of the tension is what the child experiences because they feel this pressure that's pushing them down. So they have to be checking the child's heartbeat if he's fine, he's not like there's no tension he's not going crazy like ah what's going on right so my kid was fine and they have this machine on me for like a good one hour two hours at some point i'm like guys i need to be on my feet i cannot these pains are too it's too painful they're like no you must lay down that's the only time i think i lost patience and i lost my ish and i was just like i can't i can't do this you know, and I wanted to cry because I was just like, I need to be on my feet. And they're like, no, you need to be laying down on your side. Because now I'm feeling it. And at this point, they're coming in like every five minutes. Yo, guys, let me tell you. Giving birth is not painful. There's a friend of mine called Jackie. When she gave birth years ago, I asked her, is giving birth painful? She's like, no. And I side-eyed her because I was like, first of all, a lot of people say, yes, it's painful. Second of all, you hear people screaming. Like in the movies, everybody is screaming and shouting and swearing and pulling their husbands by their ties and things like that. And you hear telling me giving birth is not painful. 
giving birth is not painful. She was right. It's not painful. It's the contractions that build up to you giving I I think I was in there for like a good 10 minutes. I think I pushed for even like 4 minutes. The child was out and I was done. And that wasn't painful. But those contractions, that 26 hours in labor where yo, that is painful. So this lady now comes, she has this drip. Now the one that said, what when I leave here, you and I are leaving together. Kuno, sister Kuno. She now comes, she has this injection on me, like this drip on me. And I'm like now asking her, Hore, what is this thing for? Are, oh no, it's going to increase the pains. I'm like, ah, oh, Sister Kuno, what do you mean? You said you're going to help me. Are, eh? That's when she explained to me, Hore, the pains help so you can give birth faster. So you have to feel the pains. There's no way you can, you, you get epidurals at a private hospital, but this is a public hospital. You're not getting an epidural. You're going to feel every single sensation. You're going to feel everything. So she's like the pain, like this drip is going to make the pains go faster and harder. So, you know, you, you can, you can do the things. I when I leave here, you must, you and your baby must be leaving with me. And I'm like, Ish. so now I'm chilling there. And I think in like 10 minutes, even less, I felt this thing kick in. Yo, guys, yo, that's when I thought. Now, when I say those pains murder you, whatever that solution was, yo, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. Like then, I felt, I felt that. Then I felt sick. Like I felt not sick. Like I want to vomit. Like I felt my body. I'm not. I'm not okay. Like I'm in labor. Now I'm in labor. And this thing is, and I'm watching it like go in my system and the pains are getting worse and worse and worse. And then she comes, actually what I skipped is she came corner and then she checked me. She was like four centimeters. She's the last person that checked me and said four centimeters when she came in and started her shift. And then she was like, mm -mm, I need to give you something to help your things go faster. After she gave me the injection, I think she came in like 30 minutes. She came and checked me. She's like, eight centimeters. Almost July, most of the time, I And now she's like, okay, eight centimeters. You need to get ready. Like, take your son's, your son's clothes or your child's clothes. Everything that you're going to need. Take off whatever you need to take off and then come to the other room. And I was like, sharp. So I went to that other room and... I got there. Now I'm eight centimeters dilated. Ne? Did they take out the drip? I think they, yes, they took out the drip and then I walked there and went to the other room. That's the side where everybody's screaming. Now I'm like, hey. And like skipper on that side for people to be screaming like this. But in my mind, I'm thinking, number one, my grandmother said I must be a lady. Number two, I hope I don't take a crap while I'm pushing this baby. I hope I don't do-do and I didn't do right? So... <laughs> So I go there and when I get there, there's another lady, another nurse that's there. And she's like, let me check you. She checks me. She's like, eight centimeters. Um, you need to wait till 10. And I'm like, ah, they said I must come this side. And then the lady came and she was like, no, 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 no. Her things are going way, way fast. So she will get to 10. Don't worry. She'll get to 10 and maybe like next few minutes she'll be there. So she's like, okay, lay down. I had to take off my... I had to, because I was wearing a bra, I think. I had to take off my nightdress. And then I sat there. And now, when I'm there, you, 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 the thing is, you feel it, man. Like, you feel it. Or something is coming out. And I'm like, something is coming out to this lady. She's like, don't push. I'm like, I'm saying it's coming out. What do you mean, Ashley? She's like, don't push because I'm alone here. The other nurses have to come and come help me. So do not push. And at that point, I'm telling this lady, and I, I was sort of like angry because I know that when, when the child is coming, you should not do anything to sort of like stop the process or hold the process or whatever. But at the same time, I know that I cannot be given birth to one. And she's trying to leave to go call those other ladies. I'm like, sister, when you come back here, I would have given birth alone. Can you guess what this lady tells me? She says, if you love your child, you close your legs and make sure you do not push. And I'm telling her like, at that point, guys, I don't know how to explain this, but at that point, your body is like, it has taken over. I don't need to do nothing, right? Because I can feel 
the pressure i can feel that this child is coming and he's going lower and lower and lower and this woman says close your legs and make sure you don't push i'm not trying to push it's just happening you know but anyway her and i have this back and forth now and she i think she can see what i'm serious and i'm getting angry and i'm just like what are you saying because now ikari like i'm not listening to you and i'm here to actually listen because I, I i don't know like i don't know what's going on like you are a nurse you know what's going on but now you're telling me not to do something and i'm not even doing it like it's just happening on its own and then she comes these other ladies come and they're like hi how far are you one check about oh actually the other one comes and she's like oh Muz, look at look at the hair you know at that time i'm like i'm telling this lady but now this lady is like she says to me she's like but this child is not coming out of this 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 tiny and this is too small we need to cut you and help you because yeah this is too tight it's too small so i had to be cut right and oh i could feel it i could feel it like they cut you and she sort of like had to put her to and she's wearing gloves ne? but then she has this lubricant kind of thing but you can feel the friction from gloves and then she puts her two fingers and then she goes around like which is the round of like the around my son's head right like the perimeter of his head so she goes like this and then she says to me at this point you need to do all the work like you and your child are doing all of the work don't push when you don't feel the contractions so now i'm being lectured now like okay this is what you need to do you need to wait for the contraction when the contraction starts you push when it stops you stop and i'm like okay and then she says you must hold your legs like this when i say push or when you feel the contraction you have to put your chin on your your chest and then you pull your legs back and you push right and i was like cool so they cut me she did all of that and then i was like can't you guys like pull the child she's like no you need to push <laughs> and your child will also help you because you guys are like in sync she's like you guys just need to be in sync you wait for the contraction he knows or when the contraction starts he needs to be pushing because that's what the body does and then you must also know when the contraction starts you assist the child you help the child by pushing and i was like sharp i think i pushed like four times then my child was out i think i pushed like four times my child was out and after that they took him they gave him to me oh guys i was looking all raggedy and tired and he was looking all green and pink and all these different colors of purple but oh my gosh and then they took him they weighed him they gave him his clothes while they're doing that there's another nurse that came and he's actually a mother of a classmate of mine from high school and she was stitching me up she stitched me up there and yeah they told me her when you get home you must rest when you bath you must or when you pee and all of that you must pour the stitch area with like salt water and all of those things but everything was fine like i gave birth and then i came home and everybody was happy i just wanted to sleep but i've never slept ever since until today i'm sleep deprived and yeah if there's one thing that i need right now is to sleep so that was my experience i mean it was great and no complications which i'm very grateful for and yeah oh wait one thing that i was very very nervous about is taking a dump and like taking a number two and a doo-doo with those stitches because they were painful when i say painful those stitches were painful that i couldn't sit right i always had to lay on my stomach or lay on the side but even laying on the side it was painful so i thought to myself if pain and just sitting is this painful imagine when i have to take a number two. Oh my gosh days building up to me taking a number two i was telling my mom to give me laxatives and she's like no i can't do that and i'm like no but then no guys because i'm eating and i'm eating and i'm eating and i'm not taking a number two so the day i have to take a number two ah uh, uh, it's gonna be so painful i was so nervous but then when i did it and i came back and i was like i'm still alive my mom was like hey what do i know <laughs> but guys i had the most beautiful experience if I, and when i do get pregnant again which i know i'm gonna get pregnant again i want to have more kids my partner says he wants six i'm okay with just two but i have a time frame like a, from now 
until I'm 30. 35, I'm even pushing it. 30. I need to have all of my kids. And uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not having children after 30. I can't. But yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you guys don't mind, please just tell me like your guys' experiences and if it was smooth. And if you gave birth at a public hospital, I think it's interesting. Like people who gave birth at public hospitals have these stories. Like these stories. I think there's a video that I saw sometime when I was pregnant and I was very nervous about giving birth. And this lady was talking about how a lady just gave birth on it. Like she stood up and the child went and fell on the floor. And I was like, what? Such things happen to people. And yeah, and this thing of your water breaking, my water never broke. They broke it when I, when I got in there. They were like, boom. And then I, like, it was like, whoo, and the water came out. And yeah, I got stitched up. And can you imagine, like, they literally stitch in your vagina. And I'm just sitting there talking to this lady about her child. Like, where is your uncle guy? Like, what did he study? And things like that. Because, you know. And she's just stitching me up and things like that. But I had fun. And giving birth is not painful. It's when you are in active labor. And the contractions that lead up to you pushing. Those will murder you. Those is what that is what you need to prepare yourself mentally for because all along I was thinking oh my gosh I'm gonna have to push it's gonna be so painful oh my gosh ah four minutes I was done but that 24 hours of feeling the pains like coming and going and coming and going oh my gosh that was that was torture that was torture but would I do it again definitely I would definitely do it over and over and over again like I have a new appreciation for my body now. After giving birth, I have a new appreciation for my body. Like, my body bounced back. I even lost weight. I'm not even... I used to weigh, like, 48 kgs. Now I'm, like, 43 kgs. I don't... You can't even tell that I had a child. Like, you can't even tell. And I'm just like, this body. Like, I have a new appreciation for a woman's... Just a woman's body. And the things... The things that you go... The things that we go through as women, guys, you know... Like, we need to love our bodies even more. Like, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm at this point now because I had given birth. And I've seen... Like, and I think giving birth is like the most your body can ever go through as a woman. And I survived that ish. And I came out looking all... Like, even more snatched. You know? But anyway, now I'm just blabbing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I can see my camera is dying. It's bleeping. My tree is bleeping. And... I need to charge. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please leave me suggestions down below so I make content that you guys actually want to see. But I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!